Hello everyone and welcome to Gridnotes 1991. I'm John Myers and for the next half hour we'll take a look at what's in store for us as the 1991 football season gets underway. Tonight we'll focus on some of our area high schools, Missouri Western, Golden Griffins, and the Kansas City Chiefs. We begin with Lathrop. The Mules improved every year under new head coach Ron Musser, but Musser moved to KCI arch rival East Buchanan. This season the Mules will be guided by a rookie head coach Doug Miller, a graduate of LeBlanc High School and Benedictine College. Well, I think we've got experience in, uh, on the line positions, and I've, from what I understand, we've got some players that played after some injury situations to some, some key players last year, so we're not, we're not inexperienced, but uh, I wouldn't say by any means that we're an experienced team. Um, we've got a couple running backs back that played a little bit, I believe, last year, both ways. And we've got a couple, couple linemen, I know a guard and a tackle, Greg Harris and uh, Clay Morgan, were starters both ways, I believe, last year. So that'll be the experience of our group right there. But um, you know, I think the rest. We've got some upperclassmen. We've got, uh, I believe, eight to ten seniors, and right around seven or seven to nine juniors right now practicing. So we've got a good nucleus to work with. Do you know, uh, as far as size-wise, how how Lathrop's going to compare with the rest of the KCI? Well, uh, being a newcomer to the KCI conference, like I am. Um, I couldn't tell you how we're going to compare, but uh, I feel I feel I feel good about our size. We're not we're not big. We don't have that big kid that's 245, 250, but we've got some kids right around that 175 to 200 pound range. You know that, that I think can can come off the ball and play football on the line for us. What what's your uh, style of offense and defense? What are you going to run? Uh, is it anything uh, radical or just tell me about it? Well, I wouldn't say anything radical. That's for sure. With me, <laughs> this is my first year and. Uh, I was a defensive player myself all through, you know, in college, and um, that's kind of ironic because so I'll be coaching the offense this year. Coach Larry Hughes will be directing the defense, and uh, what what he's got planned, I think, is kind of a multiple set look where we'll be able to show some different looks and hopefully be able to play and adjust and, and stunt out everything we have. As far as offense, um, I'd like to be able to be 50-50, be able to run the ball and pass the ball, you know, and feel comfortable doing either or. Um, you know, with those those running backs coming back, you know, hopefully we'll have some experience back there in the backfield. You got a quarterback and a set of receivers that will be able to you'll be able to go to the air on offense. We have a quarterback and a set some receivers. Um, quarterback Jannon Carlson and uh, wide receiver Chris Johnson and Jamie Martin. Our tight end Justin Pirtle saw a little action last year. But uh, I tell you, we're really thin in those areas. You know, after, if we if we should have an injury happen or something like that, we're really going to have to dip down into the sophomore and freshman shop ranks to, to fill that position. Um, you, you know, I know you're new to the, the conference. You already said that, but uh, from what the other coaches have told you and the, the uh, what you hear around the conference, who do you think is going to be uh, the team to beat or the teams to beat in the KCI? Well, I think it's no secret that uh, Plattsburgh should be the team to beat. From what I've read in. Uh, Read in some magazines, you know, the statewide publications, things like that. I guess they were 11 and 11 and one last year, lost in the quarterfinals. Um, and apparently, they've got some experienced people back back there, and their coach, Coach Oder, seems to really have a good program going on down there. So I, I would imagine Plattsburgh would be the team to beat. Now, as far as you know, picking like a upper two or three teams, I couldn't do it because I'm just I'm just too new and Lather fit in. I I would hope. From what I'm saying, um, what I'm seeing, I would think somewhere around the middle of the pack, and uh, you know we'll be we'll be doing our best to get up right up there and challenge you know challenge for the league title. There's more of Gridnose 91, but as we take a break, let's take a look at the final standings in the KCI last season. In the Grand River Conference, it's no secret this year that the team to beat is the J.C. Penny Hornets. The Hornets are coming off a playoff season, and head coach Dave Fairchild is taking a low-key approach to the 1991 season. Well, we're not going to change too much. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of our uh, experienced people back in the backfield. We did lose Shannon Fagley from last year. He was a very good football player for us in the backfield, but we do have Brad Divin, uh, 
Corey Hales and Matt Woods returning in the backfield. Uh, how does your team's size compare with the rest of the Grand River Conference? We've got some size. Some of them aren't in the best of shape right now, so you know we're hopefully uh, going to be able to get them in some good shape you know, here for too long. Uh, you got a lot of momentum coming into this season following your uh, well your playoffs last year. Uh, do you see that in practice? Well, I think uh, the players expect a lot of themselves, and we've been relatively successful over the last few years. So uh, I think there is some tradition involved, and our players are out here working hard, and they're planning on carrying that on. You've been here a while, so you've got a good idea of who's coming back in the conference. Uh, how does Hamilton stack up this year against the rest of the GRC? Well, I, you know, I've never been one to make predictions too much, but I would think that we would have a pretty solid uh, chance of, uh, of competing for the conference title. Will it be a, dis will it be a disappointment if uh, you don't get the conference title? Well, you know, we don't worry about those things. You know, we worry about one game at a time, and if we can do that and uh, take care of the little things, well, then those conference titles and all the things that come with them will take care of themselves. And the feedback you get from your players, though, are they are their hopes pretty high? I mean, you, I'm sure you hear them talking. What do they say? Well, you know, we expect to win every football game that we play. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm sure their expectations are high. As the coaching staff, we expect to win every game. Mm -hmm. But, again, you know, it's done out on the practice field. It's not done in the newspaper or the TV or the radio. It's done on the field. Uh, let's talk about on the field. Um, who, who do you got back, quarterback? You said you got some running backs, but are you going to throw the ball more or run it or what? Well, we probably need to throw the ball a little bit more than we have. We have a very, very talented quarterback in Corey Hales. Uh, we need to develop a few more receivers. We've got uh, some players back, uh, and Scott Englert that made some great catches for us last year, so he's returning. And we just need to develop a few others, and if we can do that, I think we can have a successful passing attack. Defensively, very strong as far as depth. Uh, Depth-wise, that's a misnomer a little bit sometimes. Is you know what you can. We got players we can put there. Uh, if we have somebody go down, uh, we have some younger players I think that are improving each day in practice, and have some athletic ability. So hopefully we can make them into very good football players to give us that good depth. Are you already preparing for the opener against Princeton? No, we're not uh, doing anything like that right now. We're just basic fundamentals out here right now and, and just trying to get everybody figure, figuring out what's going on. Penny High opens their season September 13th at Princeton. We'll be back with more Grid Knows 91 right after this. The Maysville Wolverines and head coach Tony Braby are optimistic about the 1991 season. Maysville promises to put an exciting team on the field this fall. We've got to add in some wrinkles because of our, our passing game. Uh, we're going to have to throw screens and uh, we're going to have to run draws to keep the defense honest. So otherwise they'll just line up and, and come at us uh, full bore. So we've got to keep them honest and uh, do some play action faking to hold the, hold the linebackers and so so forth. But uh, then I think once once we establish a passing game, get the ball up in there, I think that might soften the defense up a little bit and then we can turn around and run. But uh, last year where we would maybe be uh, – 70 70 percent you know run to, to pass we we'd like to be the other way around i'd like to be something like uh uh 65 35 70 30 pass run so uh we've got this is this is the only team i've been around that we've had uh, uh four to five receivers that can that got good speed they're all running under four nine and, and and all the kids can catch the ball and i got a quarterback that's back uh started as a sophomore last year through over a, a thousand yards tim flynn so he's got he's got the capabilities of getting it done we just got to give him some time so i've said over and over again people ask well how are you going to do and i think we'll be as well as how our lineman get, gets the job done how about on defense? You're a little more healthy as far as experience there. Uh, what are you looking at on defense this year? Well, defensively, uh, we've got seven returning uh, starters. And um, what I mean on that, we've, we had like uh, kids start two games, uh, was going to be our starting defensive back, and then he broke his foot, was out the rest of the year. So I, I, uh, I count him as, as a would, would, would have been, a, he would have finished out the whole year as playing defensive back anyway. So I look at him as a starter. So I uh, had a couple of young. Uh, JV kids step in at linebacker for me last year, and uh, so I using them as starters. So again, uh, we should be our defensive backfield should be real solid. Our linebackers will be uh, quick. Uh, we don't have a lot of size. Uh, again, we're going to be a little weak up up front. And last year we ran a four four, and and I don't think right now I don't know how much four four we're going to run. I think it's uh, 
we don't have four good down linemen, so we may have to run uh, uh, with three linemen up front and run, it, run out of a 50 look on defense. So, uh, But we've got a lot of speed, and uh, we'll have to make up uh, uh, our size for our speed and get into the ball in a hurry and, and pursuit and, and gang tackling. But uh, uh, I think we're going to do real well on defense. So if we can uh, maybe keep the score low, it'll give us a chance to uh, be in ball games. On the GRC this year, Hamilton, of course, returning uh, off the state playoff season. Uh, where does Maysville come into play with that? Well, we will face Hamilton last game of the season. So if we stay healthy and our passing game is what it should be, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, we might be able to air it out and score on some big plays. Yeah, they, I think they got their foot in the door to go to the state all the way. I think they know that. Uh, they want it. The fans want it from Hamilton. They've got a uh, very good coach and Coach Fairchild. So I think they got everything going for them uh, on, on the way to state. You know, if they can stay healthy, uh, I think, you know, they got a good shot at it. Uh, right now, I think every coach in the conference picking Hamilton to uh, win the conference, and Albany should be uh, a close run. They got a lot of kids coming back, although they did lose uh, Coach Bowers, their head football coach, and he went down south. And then uh, Gallatin uh, had uh, took it on the chin last year, but they had a lot of young kids. So I think we, uh, we should, uh, we should um, finish in the middle of the pack, I think, if, if we stay healthy. But uh, Hamilton's in our district, and, and uh, if, if we're going to do anything, we got to beat Hamilton. And it, we would just have to be very lucky, I think, in order to upset Hamilton. On uh, your first game of the, of the season, it's uh, going to be quite exciting. I understand there's a story behind the Oric game of last year. Well, it was. Uh, Oric came in uh, uh, basically rated in, in the top ten uh, in the state, and they came in with a huge football team. I mean, they're just big. And uh, they got uh, Jason Canoy back as a running back, and he's about 6'3", 6'4", and about 200 pounds. So uh, they came in. They were really excited about the season, and uh, we uh, tied it up 14-14 with about a minute uh, uh, 20 to go and, and we threw a double pass. We threw that split in. He tossed it on downfield and we scored uh, to end up winning uh, 22 to 14. So um, I'm sure they want to revenge that. You know, they felt like uh, uh, maybe, you know, it should have went into overtime and they had a lot of momentum going. If it went in, into overtime, it might have been a different story. So we've got to go down to their place. So uh, it's tough to go in someone's backyard and, and win. But uh, I've been awful fortunate in my coaching career that uh, uh, I've won a lot of uh, first games. So uh, it seems like we've always had our kids well prepared and the, and the specialty teams are, are right on track. So I'm hoping to keep my uh, record uh, going very well as far as first game victories. And we need that to get a good start. I mean, that can make a, a lot of difference in the season. Uh, you're all excited, the kids are excited, and you come out there and you lose your first game, and, and it, it kind of puts a damper on you. So if we can come out and win the first game, I think it'll help us get on a roll. Stay with us. More Grid Notes 91 when we come back. Welcome back to Grid Notes. The Cameron Dragons are coming off a season in which they finished at 500 with a record of 5-5. Five and five. And You can call this year a rebuilding year of sorts. They're without leading rusher from a year ago, senior Brian Lohman. And looking down the road in what could possibly be their last game awaits the Plattsburgh Tigers, one of the toughest teams in the KCI and one loaded with talent. Head coach Robert Newhart talks about his 1991 Cameron Dragons. Well, right now we've got 38 kids out total, and it's down a little bit from last year where we had 42 kids out. Two years ago, I believe we had 44 kids out, but we're right around those same numbers. And uh, you know, I wish you know a few more kids would have been out, but you always got to work with the kids that you have in camp, and uh, you know that's what we're going with right now. As far as depth-wise overall, uh, our running back spot, you know, uh, we're trying to shore up and get some people in there, and uh, uh, every place else, so we look we look pretty good. Skill positions like quarterback, how? Uh you got a good leader out there this year? Who is he? Well, right now, um, we're looking at several people. Uh, Kyle Fisher probably has a nod right now as far as uh, being ahead of everybody else. Uh, Garrett Griffin right now also uh, is running number two. Uh, you know, it's a fight for you know that number two spot with Jeff Mellencamp and Chris Neal both, uh, you know, coming in doing a real good job. Just a matter of who's going to step forward and uh, lead that group of kids, you know, into the end zone once in a while. And uh, you know, that's what we're looking at. We're working with all of them, and hopefully someone will emerge as a quarterback. Um, you've been doing this a week now. Are you... Are they picking everything up? Or are you where you want to be as far as getting the offense and defense across to them? I think we're ahead of where we were last year at this time, you know, partly because, uh, you know, I think the kids uh, have done a good job in the summer camp that we had uh, here earlier this summer, and we were able to really step up, you know, when we started practice last Wednesday from that summer camp and get a lot of things in. Uh, definitely we're not anywhere we need to be yet for uh, midseason form or anything. Uh, we got a lot of young kids, a good group of sophomores. The seniors have been doing a real good job as far as, uh, you know, providing that leadership that 
what you want. And, you know, we'll be there. You know, I think uh, if you give us some time, our offense will come around. Our defense has got to be tough early. Uh, we got a lot of tough ball games coming up, uh, you know, with uh, West Platte, Pleasant Hill, and Smithville right there, second, third, and fourth ball games. And our defense has got to be, you know, do a job for us. Seems like the, the theme is you got a small group, but. And like you said, they did that seven on seven this summer. They seem to be a hard working bunch. Is that true? Yes, they are. Uh, you know, in years past, you know, I've had some hard working kids and stuff. I've never had, uh, you know, the number of kids that are that are setting the example uh, this fall. Uh, you know, you know, I go on and on as far as listing names. Uh, uh, seniors been working hard. We've been doing an excellent job in the weight room here. And and again, I couldn't ask for anything more. All the assistant coaches have been very pleased with the effort that they've been giving. And uh, you know, we've been working them. Making a change in positions is Chris Denny, who will move from split into running back this season. Denny spoke to us about what the team expects to do this year. I think we have a good chance to win the conference this year. We, our attitude, we've got a winning attitude this year, and, and I think, like the other teams say, Cameron doesn't have a chance, but it's just like watch out when we meet face to face on Friday nights because we'll be there. Do you think a lot of teams are going to look right past you this season? I think they probably will because we graduated a lot of seniors last year. But uh, other than that, we'll be, we'll be there. The Dragons open up at home Friday night against Mid Buchanan. We'll be back with more Grid Notes 91 right after this. Welcome back. The Golden Griffins of Missouri Western face a transition year in 1991 as they welcome aboard a new head coach. Former William Jewell head coach Stan McGarvey replaces Dennis Darnell and must steer a team that won just two games in 1990. McGarvey, though, has the pleasure of choosing between two very good quarterbacks, returning starter Joe Reed and University of Missouri transfer Mark Ramstack. John, even uh, right now we have a battle for the quarterback position. Uh, Joe Reed has had a great three years here at Missouri Western as a starting quarterback. Uh, we're very pleased with Joe as he has made the transition from a run option type quarterback to a throwing quarterback. Uh, we're really pleased with Joe and his efforts. And then, of course, uh, anytime you uh, are known for your passing game or if you're trying to install that kind of offensive philosophy, you know, you got to have more than one quarterback. So we, in turn, recruited uh, Mark Ramstack when he became available, made the announcement that he was going to be transferring from the University of Missouri. Uh, we're also equally pleased with uh, Mark Ramstack. He's had a great two-a-day uh, session up until he... Uh, uh, more or less uh, tripped up and, and had an ankle sprain. And he's been out for uh, a little bit, but he's getting back, and I think the people will enjoy uh, Mark as well as we uh, go into the season. So there's a battle right there for that position. We uh, hope to be able to have an idea of who our quarterback will be uh, uh, come this Friday. Uh, Saturday, you play Wayne State. Um, how important is that to you and your team uh, as you get ready to go Saturday night? Uh, well, of course, uh, Wayne State is our first ball game. They're a much improved ball club from previous years. Uh, Coach Wagner uh, had a team that went 7-4 and four last year. Uh, so it's going to be a great challenge for us. They're a great defensive ball club, nationally ranked a year ago, like 12th in the country overall defense. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, their offense is a wide-open attack, so it will present uh, some unique challenges for our defense. So it'll be a great ball game. The preseason coaches poll, they didn't give you too much respect as far as where you're going to finish this year. Do you, are you going to prove them wrong this year? You bet. We're going to go out there, and I can't tell you how many wins, John, but we're going to scrap and scrape for every game that we've got. And if I were a betting man, I'd bet on the Griffins. Do you, you think they're wrong? I mean, why, why would they pick you so low? I mean, you only won two games last year, but you look like you got a lot of talent. Why would they Why would they place you that far down? Well, again, I think anytime you go into a transitional year, uh, if you've had and come off a, a, a slow year like a two and nine season of last year, and then you have a new staff come in, uh, people feel that uh, things will be a little bit rugged and tough, but that's not the case necessarily. I think we've blended it well, extremely well. We've got great players. We've got coaches that work well with young men. I think the young men enjoy the atmosphere that we present here on the field so uh, we hope to uh, not have a transitional year we just hope we can go right on and, and have a great year the Golden Griffins began their 1991 season Saturday night against Wayne State as we go to break we're going to take a look at this year's AP top 25 college football poll stay with us
Welcome back, and let's take a look now at the Kansas City Chiefs. A taste of the playoffs is all that Chiefs fans needed to get excited about this season. A year ago, they were 11-5 and and went to a wild-card playoff defeat against the Dolphins. This year, though, they're going to want more than the playoffs. They're talking about the Super Bowl in Kansas City. And to get to that Super Bowl, they're going to need another great season out of this man, Steve DeBerg. DeBerg had a career season in 1990 and finished the year as the NFL's third highest rated quarterback. Although he held out throughout much of this year's training camp, DeBerg's play in the preseason indicates he's in step with that Kansas City offense. And behind DeBerg are two of the best running backs in the NFL, plus a number one draft pick at running back. Christian Okoye and Barry Ward will lead the rushing attack, and the Chiefs' top draft pick, Harvey Williams, can fit in the passing game as well as the ground attack. 1990 NFL sack leader Derek Thomas leads the defense, which ranked 16th overall last season. You'll see plenty of the Chiefs on television this fall. KC has three dates on Monday Night Football, and they'll be shooting for their first Monday night win since 1975. The first Monday affair is set for September 16th in Houston. Expectations are high in Kansas City, as they are all across the country. As football fans begin to root for their favorite teams, football season is finally upon us. And that will do it for this edition of Gridnos 1991. I'm John Myers. Thanks for joining us. And remember, starting next week, we begin our Sports Sunday telecast every Sunday. So join us then. We'll see you later.